Jordan is facing uh, a pretty tough economic condition, low economic growth, you have high unemployment, the presence of refugees and a regional crisis. What will be your priority for 2020? Thank you, Francine. Delighted to be here. Um, we live in a tough neighborhood. Most of our problems are created across the borders and then uh, spill over into, into Jordan. We have 20% of our population are refugees uh, with the slow trade and all the closures and the conflicts in the region. Um, uh, unemployment, especially among youth, is, uh, is very high. Having said that, I think Jordan has established itself as a very resilient uh, country in a, re in a troubled region. And, um, and we're determined to make things uh, work on, the, uh, on all fronts. The, uh, I think politically and economically we've proven uh, to be a, uh, a resilient state and, uh, and moving forward. So to give you examples, um, um, we have committed um, in, a Lond in the London conference last, mm -hmm. uh, last year, we have committed to uh, a matrix of reforms over five years. Um, it's already started uh, paying off. So, for example, um, we have fantastic FTA agreements, free trade mm -hmm. agreements, but they had not been uh, taken advantage of. And our SME sectors wa uh, was not exporting. So we did the measures on that. Our exports are up by around 9% 2019, the first year we've implemented that. Same with ICT. We have tremendous youth talent in Jordan. Um, and the growth in the ICT sector is around 11 percent, uh, much b larger than the overall growth. Tourism is a fantastic sector in Jordan. We have Petra, we have heritage site, we have a Christian pilgrimage uh, site, we have beautiful Wadi Ram, but um, airlines were used to be, uh, now we have the uh, low-cost carriers open and tourism is up 10% in, uh, in one year. So we have a lot of this happening and as we implement these reforms, the doing business indicators that we have, we're up 29 Minister, points on that. How do you deal with the refugee crisis? Um, well, we hope that we don't have to deal with it by ourselves. This is not a crisis created by Jordan. Uh, and uh, we did what's right. We opened our borders to women and children and, um, uh, and, and accommodated 1.3 million refugees in schools, health centers, camps, and outside camps. The cost to us is around 2.4 billion but per how, year. How alone, Prime Minister, do you sometimes feel in dealing with the crisis? I have. Let me give you an example. In 2018, we went to the world and said, look, we're bearing the brunt of this, oh. of this crisis. We need your help. And we, the World Bank came up with the cost. We got around 64% of the cost covered. This year, in 2019, the past year, we got around 42% covered. Now, we realize there's donor fatigue and country fatigue, and then it goes from the first page uh, to the 16th page. But the refugees are still in Jordan, and somebody still needs to take care of them. Or we, the last thing we want to do is force them back over the border when it's still not safe. So we're doing our part. We hope the world does too. Um, Prime Minister, you talked about the Middle East being a, a tough neighborhood. If the U.S. pulls the troops out of Iraq, what happens to that neighborhood? I think we have to realize that even if we think we won uh, the battle with ISIS, um, this is not a battle, this is a war. It used to be Al-Qaeda, now it's ISIS. There's going to be Virgin 3 and Virgin 4 and Virgin... Vacuum is dangerous. Uh, failed states are dangerous. Um, um, the undermining of, of, of sovereignty and um, borders is dangerous. So I think all countries of the region and the world need to invest in the peace and security and bringing the parties together around the table in all the countries in the region. Otherwise, we will have failed states and then it's going to be extremely difficult to manage. Um, Gulf state allies have pledged and extended about five billion uh, dollars to Jordan. Have they pledged more? What comes after that? Well, 
uh, that is not the number that we that um, uh, that we have received. Okay. But uh, um, and many Gulf states have their own uh, challenges uh, and, and and problems. They have been very supportive um, in in Jordan, especially in helping us um, uh, with um, supporting us with projects that are. Um, grand projects, large-scale projects that we're uh, moving forward to. We have a public-private par partnership and we're hoping that our allies will come in uh, uh, from the Gulf and invest in large-scale projects in water, energy, uh, public uh, transport, mainly um, cargo, uh, shipment, train and, and passenger. These are all ready and we're, we're talking to our partners there. Um, Prime Minister, uh, your, your king has said that Jordanian-Israeli ties are actually at their lowest. When will they get better and what impact does it have on, on actually gas relationships? Well, His Majesty the King has really led the call um, and reminded the world that the origin, the core of all of the problems we're seeing is the lack of progress on the Israeli-Palestinian front. Without a two-state solution, um, we're just in uh, things are going to get uh, uh, worse rather than better. Um, it, is, it is crucial that Palestinians' aspirations of a state of their own, where not, they're not second-rate uh, citizens, is, um, is empowered. Most of these uh, fanatical um, groups, one of their main claims is that they will help the Palestinians. Um, so we need to address that core core issues and you are right um, and his majesty pointed to the fact that it is at the lowest point this this year Israel has witnessed can we witness three elections without clear outcomes both parties are appealing to the right wing that doesn't believe in a Palestinian state so we're appealing to the world to um, uh, not let this door and possibility for a true lasting peace get closed. Some of the actions, the bilateral actions on the ground are creating facts on the ground and closing the possibility of a peace in the region. So what are our prospects for peace? We'll have to wait for the outcome of the Israeli election and, and, and see a change of attitude, frankly. Uh, otherwise, we will see these um, um, constantly, these, these side wars, if you will, and failed states, and, um, um, and, and and we need to get to the core of it and, um, and, and pull together towards a peaceful solution that uh, for both states, with Palestine as a state, Jerusalem as its capital, um, and the Hashemites, the Jordan is, is very concerned because we have custodianship over holy sites uh, representing Christ, the Christian world and the Muslim world. And any unilateral action on that by the Israeli side will be extremely dangerous. Prime Minister, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, friends.